Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, graduate course on machine learning. Uh, as you can see, this course is in English, um, but you can ask, you can submit your assignments and exams in French. And like, I'm learning French, but we also have French TAs uh, who should be able to guide you with your assignments and exams. Uh, let's get started. And um, but first of all, we are back to classroom after one and a half years. Like, so I wanted to give a remote option for students who still cannot be here because of visa reasons or because they are still not feeling that they can come to a classroom, right? Like, so, so we are going to have some students in the Zoom call. And if everything works well, like we'll continue this for the entire semester. So this also gives you uh, an extra option. Like, so some days if you feel like you are not feeling good, like, like if, you, if you think you have some symptoms of COVID, like you could always stay home and join the class remotely, okay? So let's get started. So I am Sarath Chandar, like I'm your uh, instructor, like I'm a professor at Polytechnic Montreal, like uh, at GAGL, uh, and I'm also a core faculty member at uh, MILA, which is the Quebec A Institute. Um, and this is, this course was previously called INF8953 CE. Um, uh, now this is the more permanent version. So it's going to be 8245E for many years now. And um, so I have a team of TAs, like, so who will be helping us throughout the course. Like, so uh, we have Abdul, Arjun, Gabriel, and Waliyafan. Um, now with, with more than hundred plus students, like I am also planning to hire another TA so that we have more support um, in terms of assignments, tutorials, and everything. Okay, so first we are going to go through a bit of logistics, uh, like a lot of boring details for the first 15 minutes and then like we'll get into the topic, okay? So, uh, so bear with me for like next 15 to 20 minutes. And these are useful information for you to know. So the course website, as you might have already seen, uh, is a public website. So all the information about lectures, schedule, assignments, everything will be in the public website, not in the Moodle. Uh, you can also see the schedule in the public website, which will be updated regularly. So let me see if I can show you the website. Okay. No. okay, so the screen sharing is stopping me from... Okay. Yeah, so... You can see all the information about the course here. And like you have the syllabus, you have all the logistics, which we are going to go through today anyways. And you have the schedule, like which, which would look more polished for the next couple of weeks, but then like I'll be polishing the schedule as and when we go. It also depends a lot on like how we progress over the weeks, okay? So, and you also have all the information about different tutorials that uh, you will be uh, attending and the assignment page. Uh, okay, so let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so I think I already explained like we are trying a hybrid mode class. I hope it works. And uh, the lectures are recorded like for a couple of reasons, like one for students who cannot uh, be here, like, and like, like there are some students who also have some clash. Like if you have a clash with another course, like for half of the course, then probably you can use the recordings. And the recordings will also be available on YouTube, so, so you can watch them uh, later. Okay, so what is this course about, right? Like, so, so this is an introductory course in machine learning, which is going to cover fundamental topics in supervised learning and unsupervised learning, okay? So we will not cover reinforcement learning uh, in this course. So I'm also teaching a parallel course on reinforcement learning, uh, INF8953DE, like which is starting this Wednesday. And I guess a lot of you are registered for both the courses. So, um, so you can take both in parallel if you want. Okay, so is this the right course for you? So this is meant to be a first course in machine learning for the following category of students. Like, so for example, you might be an undergraduate who wants to pursue like AI or machine learning in your grad school or graduate students who want to do fundamental research in machine learning or graduate students who want to apply machine learning in their research areas. Like, so you, you could be coming from electrical engineering or mechanical engineering, and you want to apply machine learning in your problems. And for engineers who want to build machine learning solutions. 
Okay, so if is there any other reason why you are here in this course? I'm just curious. I think this pretty much covers most of the motivation. And uh, prerequisites are already available in the website, but I just want to highlight uh, that uh, I assume that you have the basic probability, calculus, and linear algebra background. Okay, so ideally you should have done a course in all of these topics. Uh, or at least you should have picked up these math uh, background by yourself. Um, and for assignments, we are going to use Python uh, for all the assignments. Like so, like it, you don't have a choice of language, so you should you should know Python. Like if you don't know, like uh, I'll come to that part. So some AI background is recommended. Like you could have done an AI course or a data mining course, uh, so that are happening every semester here. Like, but it is not recommended. Like it is not required. So the first week's reading material covers some of these prerequisites like probability and linear algebra, okay? And also, we are going to have three optional tutorials in this week and the next week. Uh, I think we have a probability tutorial on Wednesday and linear algebra tutorial on Friday and intro to Python next Wednesday, I guess. Like the schedule is out in the website. Uh, these are optional tutorials for people who want to brush up their math and programming. Okay, so uh, one thing that I want to highlight is like all the tutorials will be online so instead of being in class. Uh, so it's in Zoom and we will record the sessions. So even if you have a clash during the tutorials, you can always go back and watch the recordings. And these are optional tutorials. Like so these are mainly for you to brush up uh, the prerequisites which you should already have before starting the course. And there is also an assignment zero, uh, which is going to cover some of these prerequisites. Okay, so assignment zero tests uh, your background in probability, linear algebra, and peer analysis. Now, this assignment is not graded. Okay, so it's already out. You can go to the course website. You should be able to see assignment zero. So this is not graded, but you should still submit this in grade scope just to learn how to use grade scope. So we will be using grade scope for evaluating all our assignments. So this assignment is an exercise for you to get used to the grade scope uh, interface. Okay, so, and you have to submit A0 if you want your A1, A2 to be evaluated. So it's not optional, but not graded. Okay, so in terms of the course structure, like they're going to have one lecture per week, three hours on Mondays. Uh, I should say that this is the first time I'm teaching a three hour lecture. Uh, I'm used to two hours or one and a half hours. Uh, I think three hours is a challenge both for you and me. So let's see how it goes. And there is a slightly unconventional thing that I want to talk about uh, and make it clear in the first lecture. So this course typically has three hours of lab every two weeks, okay? Some of you might have the lab on Wednesdays and some of you might have the lab on Fridays, okay? However, you are not going to do physical labs during these session, okay? So you can use these slots to do your assignments by yourself. And instead of having three hour for every two weeks, you are going to have one hour of office hour every day throughout the week, okay? which means like it is replaced with 10 hours of office hours. So the, the, the idea here is like you work on your assignments asynchronously and whenever you have a question, you can go to these office hours. Office hours are all virtual. So it's a Zoom call. Like you will have one out of four TAs available on Tuesdays to Fridays and on Mondays, like it's my office hour. So Mondays I will answer questions for one hour right after the lecture. So you can walk with me to, your, to my office and like I'll, I'll, I'll take questions. Uh, and for the Tuesdays to Fridays, we have TAs who will be answering your questions. So I tried this last year and I received several positive reviews. Like, so the, the, the best thing about this is like you have availability to TAs and myself like throughout the week and you can work on your assignments by yourself. And instead we will have several tutorials like which are uh, recorded as well, like in case you want to watch them later. And some, I see some of you already have printed lecture notes. Like, so I will try to release the lecture notes at least one week before this time. I did it last minute, sorry, like, but I'll try to do it at least one week before so that you can print them, read them, um, like uh, if you want to do it before the lecture. And every week 
the like, like every week we also have some reading materials okay so these reading materials are not part of the course like so it's kind of extra reading like so for example uh, let's see if we go to the schedule yeah so for example you can see that this week's reading materials uh, are listed there like so so we have uh, computing machinery and intelligence which is like a seminal paper about ai written in 1950 and uh, we have basic probability and linear algebra review like which or prerequisites and they help you re refresh your memory. Uh, but next day, every week we are going to have some of these optional reading materials like and I, I highly encourage you to go through them uh, if you consider machine learning uh, to be your career in the future. Okay, so I think, uh, yeah. I'll be using digital whiteboard for the rest of the course. Today is the only day we are, being, we are seeing slides, but I'm happy that I had one hour worth slide Hopefully, Wi-Fi resolves itself uh, in one hour. Okay, so any questions about the course structure? Any questions from Zoom? I can see the chat. Um, okay, so there are there is a question. So how much is the course overlap with INF A215? So A215 is what? Um, David, so A215 is what? Is it AI? It's probabilistic methods for AI. It was from uh, Christopher Paul. Oh, so I'm not sure A215 is Chris Paul's course, is it? Okay. So so there is not a lot of overlap with Chris Paul's course. Like So so I would encourage you, to, I would recommend you to first take this course and then take Chris Paul's course in that order because this is, this is, more fundamental and uh, rigorous, and Chris course is going to be more advanced and high level. So you'll see the difference. If you have already taken Chris course, you're going to see the difference, but it is not a good idea to take that course first and then do this course. Like, so I encourage you to take Chris course next semester. Um, but it looks like H215 is not Chris course, it's AI. If it is AI, like there is not a lot of overlap. Like you will see a lot of non-machine learning solutions for AI in the AI course. There's going to be probably 20 percentage of ML component, uh, but we are slowly reducing the ML component in the AI course so that uh, you have more ML here. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so grading info. We have three assignments. They are all individual, like which is 45 percentage. And this, include, this could include both theory and programming, uh, but it's primarily programming. And we will also have a Kaggle competition for a team of three over the last month of the course. Like uh, so that is 20 percentage of your grades. And like finally we have an interim, uh, which is for 35 percentage. Okay, as you can see, uh, like the probably 80 percentage is by yourself and like you, you do 20 percentage as a team. And uh, late submission policy, yeah? Uh, is the interim exam, uh, I mean, in a lab programming or is it on paper? Um, it's theory, it's not programming. It's theory, okay. Okay, so I'm not sure if people in the Zoom can hear questions like so. The question was if the interim exam is theory or programming, it's theory. Okay. Okay, so late submission policy. So this is a class of 100 plus students, okay? So we really don't want to take case by case decisions. So please follow the policy. So if you submit your assignments late, here's what we will do. So you'll be penalized 5% up to 24 hours, 10% after 24 hours, and 20% up to 48, sorry, after 48 and up to 72. And you cannot submit your assignments after 72 hours from the deadline, okay? Now, these are strict deadlines. I'm sure people can always have reasons for being late, uh, but if, for example, if the deadline is October 10, just assume that the deadline is October 5 and work towards October 5 instead of 10, okay? So, so you set your deadlines like much earlier so that you still make it on time. Uh, we cannot entertain individual requests about deadline extensions. Okay. And as I mentioned before, we will be using Gradescope for all the evaluations. Like, so if you go to Moodle, you should be able to see a link 
on, on, on procedure for joining grade scope. I highly encourage you to do that as soon as possible. Uh, there is only one small thing that I would like to highlight, which is already highlighted in the Moodle. When you join the grade scope for the course, make sure you give your matricule. If you don't give your matricule there, then we have no way to link your marks to the grades, okay? So please give your matricule uh, when it asks for an identification number. And, okay, in term, so given the hybrid nature of the course, and also given the fact that the cases are increasing and we don't know what is going to happen in December, like, so I decided to do a take-home exam instead of in-class exam. Okay, so we had a lot of uncertainty about this last year. I don't want to have, like, I don't want you guys to have that uncertainty. So we are just going to do a take home exam with limited amount of time. So, and you will be submitting your assignment, like interim also in grade school. So, so now you know, like how it is going to be. Okay, um, well, I think this is obvious. Like we have zero tolerance for plagiarism and cheating. We did catch few such cases last year, both in assignments and in take home in term, okay? So, so if you get caught, the actions are severe. So please, please don't plagiarize, okay? So, or cheat. Um, one thing that I would like to highlight, if you are an undergrad taking a graduate course for the first time is like, you don't do a graduate course for grades, okay? So like you're here to learn, and that is what I'm going to assume. Like, I will not assume that you're here to get an A or A plus. Uh, even though you should aim for it, like if you want to excel in the, in the topic, but the primary goal here is learning. So, so there's no use if you're not learning and cheating. Okay, so, and we'll have all of our course discussions in Piazza. So you have details on how to join this. Uh, oh, I will be releasing the lecture, like slides, like, so you don't need to take, uh, copy them, like, so I will release them. Uh, but the Moodle also has the link to Piazza, so you can just go directly to the Moodle page and join the Piazza discussions. Um, so one thing that I want to highlight about the discussion policy is you ask your questions in Piazza and TAs are going to answer, but please don't expect TAs to answer all the questions, okay? So normally like we get 100 plus question or 200, 300 questions per week. So so like TS cannot spend several hours just answering the question. So this is where you all can be helpful to each other. Like, so when you find a question that you know the answer, feel free to go and answer the question, okay? So some TA will approve it by saying this is approved by the TA, but even that approval is not necessary. If you know the right answer, you just go and help your friend and they're going to do the same for you. So, so make it a collaborative learning process uh, instead of like one directional where you ask all the questions and the TA spend a lot of time answering the questions. Okay, so I think I already mentioned about office hours. Like, so you can check the Moodle for the Zoom links for each day's office hours. Okay, so um, maybe I can show you the Moodle. So if you go to the Moodle, you have the course website, lectures. Um, uh, okay, I'll talk about the feedback. So you have the discussion forum. All the recordings will be made available here. You have the procedure for grade scope and you have all the details about the office hours. Okay. Okay, so we have an anonymous Google form, which is available in the Moodle, like uh, which will be available in the Moodle throughout the semester for your feedback, okay? So I would like to hear both positive and negative comments about every lecture, like so. If you liked something, please go and write it in the anonymous form. If you did not like something or if I was too fast, or if you want me to cover the topic again, like so any, like, or if you don't know how to use the mic properly, right? Like, so any feedback that you want to give, please go and give it in the form. Like uh, it helps me to improve the course, uh, like throughout the duration instead of waiting for improving next year, right? So, um, okay, so next email policy. So as I mentioned, this is a class of 100 plus students. So please do not email me or the TAs directly, okay? So this is why we have Piazza. In Piazza, you can send private messages to the TAs, like on the instructor, okay? So the thing is like, if you're going to send me an email, it's going to get lost in hundreds of emails. And I'm teaching two classes, which are both 100 plus students, okay? So uh, plus there are 100 other things to do. So please use Piazza for your questions. Like if you have a question, 
that you want to ask private, use Piazza. And also use the office hours. Like if you want to ask me anything, you can just talk to me after the lecture. And you can also talk to the TAs uh, during the office hours. So for office hours, like we try something new this time. So every TA is going to have one week of open office hours, which means anybody can join the Zoom call. Like usually there, there's going to be like five to 10 people in the same call and people are asking questions. Others can see your questions and answers. I found this to be valuable last time because like you also learn from others doubts. Um, I used to have two, three students who regularly just stayed in the call just to listen to others questions. Uh, but some students prefer to ask questions one on one. So on alternate weeks, the TAs will have closed office hours like where you wait in the wait room of the zoom, you're going to go one by one. So, so Moodle already has information of which TA has open office hour, which TA has closed office hours and so on. If you like this concept, let me know through anonymous feedback form. And if you have any, okay, I'm sorry, it should not be emails. Any messages regarding the assignment should only be sent to the in-charge TA, okay? So whenever we have an assignment, I think A0 doesn't mention the in-charge TA because it's not graded. For all the other assignments, we are going to have one TA leader for the assignment. Like so, so he or she is the person you should contact, like if you have any questions about the assignments through Piazza, okay? And you can email me directly only when it is extremely necessary, okay? Like, let's say you have a private information that you want to talk to me, like you can email me. I expect at max one email per person, like not one email every week, one email for the entire semester, um, but use this course ID as a topic and also CC Abdul, who is the lead TA so that he can respond immediately if I don't respond. Okay, and um, some tips to make this course useful for you before we begin. So there are two ways, in, there are two ways in which you can take this course, okay? So one, you could read the re lecture notes for the lecture before the lecture. So that is why I give you the lecture notes uh, a week before. Uh, but sometimes you like to have the suspense element, like. I like that. In that case, you don't need to read the lecture notes. Just print it and bring it to the class, but you can read the lecture notes after the lecture, okay? But whatever mode you're following, you must have mastered all the previous lectures. Um, so this I should warn you, like, so this is a fundamental course like that we are going to develop things from first principles. So each lecture is building upon the previous lecture. So if you miss a lecture, you cannot follow, okay? So that's why we have the recordings, we have the lecture notes. If you miss a lecture, make sure that you go watch the lecture, read the lecture notes before you come to the next class. Okay, so, and I think this is a, well, I have this slide for the last year for virtual classes, but maybe not, no coffee inside the classroom, I guess. I don't know the university policy, but for people in the Zoom call, if you want to stay for three hours in a video call, you could have some coffee, like try to take notes with pen and paper, do not look at your phone while sitting in the lecture. But I think these instructions were mainly for, mainly for remote students. Um, you can go and rewatch the lectures if you need it. So the lectures will be in YouTube, so you can just use 2X option and watch them as you need it. Okay, so we are towards the end of uh, logistics. Um, so by the end of this course, what would you have achieved, right? Like, so you will understand machine learning from first principles. And you have a knowledge about different machine learning algorithms. You can solve several real life prediction problems using machine learning. And you have an understanding of when to use which algorithm, which is a very, which is more of an art, right? Like so, and you can also understand the recent advances in machine learning by yourself. Okay, so this is the goal. This is the goal for the course. Okay, so I have a couple of other additional uh, promotion slides, like, okay, so, like, if you are a master's student or a PhD student, uh, like, who would like to work with me as a supervisor or a co-supervisor, or if you are an undergrad who, who is planning to convert or fast track to master's, or you want to apply for master's separately, so whatever reasons, like, you want to join my lab, like, so, you should really take this course seriously and get an A or A+, plus. so that is going to help you, and a lot of you also want to TA for the course. Like TAing for, for a course is actually a really good way of learning the topic and mastering it yourself. Like, so if you want to TA for this course next semester, 
again, you should take this course really seriously. Like I would like to see at least an A plus, um, which, which is very difficult to get. Okay, and finally, like one note about, uh, one note for undergraduate students. There's a lot of undergraduates who have registered for this course. Like, so if you want to do machine learning, okay. So Polly actually has a couple of options for you to get exposed to research. So not many students are aware of uh, INF 8900 and 8901, okay? So um, I think 8900 is a three credit course that you could take for guided reading and literature search in a topic. And similarly, INF 8901 is a three credit course to do a research project in a topic, okay? So you can actually learn to do research and get credits. Um, so you can apply for either of these courses with me next semester after you finish this course in fall. Okay, again, the same rule, like, so you should have an A or A plus um, in this course to be considered for 8900 or 8901. So this is actually a good opportunity for you to get introduced to research and still get credits, uh, three to six credits for whatever uh, you're learning. Okay, so I think uh, that stops uh, that. Okay, so that's the end of uh, logistics uh, question. Because uh, you, you talked about, about A and A plus, at what grade does A and A plus start? Yeah. As, as, we don't know. You said A and A plus, but I don't know what, what is the, is it 17, is it 18 on 20? Is it what That's, uh, <laughs> okay. Probably it's bad from my part to highlight A and A plus too much, okay? So I said you should not focus on grades. Um, like the grading is relative. So like it's, it's not 70 or 80. So it's, it's really, uh, it really depends on the class average. Okay. Like for example, if the class average is very low, like probably 80 is going to be A, right? Like so if the class average is very high, probably 85 or 90. So don't don't worry about that right now. Okay, so I hope the Wi-Fi works now. So any other general questions? I I, I know I gave a lot of information, um, but the slides are going to be available online, and the recording is also available. So uh, any high-level questions? Yeah. Yeah, do you recommend any book that I see? Ah. Okay, so that's a good question. So the question is recommendation of books. So I write my lecture notes, which is based on several books and papers. Like, so the primary source for the course is really the lecture notes. As far as like evaluation for the course is considered, I will evaluate you only based on the lecture notes, okay? So, so just to do this course, following the lecture notes is enough. However, there are like several really good introductory textbooks in machine learning, like, and I think some of them are already listed in the course website. So if you go to the syllabus, you have a bunch of reference materials, which I will be referring throughout the course. Um, like you can, Follow either Hasty or Bishop. Uh, there is also Kevin Murphy, which I haven't listed here. So, so there are several textbooks uh, available, but it is not required to uh, like read them in detail for the course. Like so, of course, like if you care about improving your machine learning skills, like then probably you should also read uh, the textbooks, not just the lecture notes. There was another question. Uh, yeah. this, uh, there is just. Uh one final uh, exam and no, no midterm. No, there's no midterm. Okay. Uh, any other question? Yeah. How many hours of work do you think uh, is recommended to pretend to do a good? Okay. That is a good but difficult question. <laughs> so technically this is a three credit course. So you have to spend nine hours per week including the lecture time, okay? So the lecture time is three hours and we don't have labs, like lab is for you to do the assignments. So you'll be spending six hours outside the course, okay? Now, I should warn you that you can do this course in six hours if you have the prerequisites. So if you don't have good background in probability or linear algebra or like analysis or Python, then of course you are going to take a lot of time to understand the concepts, okay? So, so in the past, whenever a student came to me and said like they have to spend a lot of time in the course, it's because they don't have the prerequisites. 
So that is also another reason why I say textbooks are not mandatory. Okay, so I assume that you are going to just read the lecture notes in the outside hours. Now, it is up to you. If you are enthusiastic, you can go read the textbooks. But that time is not considered in like in in the, in the overall course uh, hours. Okay, so so you can comfortably do this course in six hours outside, like if you have the background, um, and just follow the lecture notes. And do the assignments. So maybe keep that as a good indicator. Like so, see see how much time you are spending. Maybe adjust it. Like um, and do more readings, extra readings in your free time. Any other questions? 